I'm a specialist in public administration. I'm already involved in local governments about uh, 30 years. And now I'm involved in the cooperation between governments, but also private parties in the domain of retail on behalf of the Ministry of Economic Affairs. Uh, because they analyze that it's really a task to, um, the, the, to, to, the, to handle the effects of the changes in the retail sector, especially when you look at the spatial effects, but also when you see the employment effects and the opportunities that are there for consumers. So the private and the public parties need to work together to, get this, to grasp these chances and to uh, try to rearrange and transform the sector in the right direction. Okay, good. And we heard from, we heard from Chris and also there have been discussions over the last kind of couple of days here um, about how maybe the government's role is to enable cities and, and make that work. How do you see your role in government in terms of in terms of boosting the activity? I think it's promoting and facilitating the, 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 the uh, cooperation on the local, especially at the local level, but also at the regional level, because a lot of CC cities uh, think that they're in their town hall town or in their uh, shopping areas, it won't be as worse as otherwise. So um, the the impact of the changes is really to be recognized at a local level but also handled at a regional level and it's really a bottom-up approach um, the it's not the idea that counts it's the action that counts and you need the private partners so we enable these activities by uh, sharing knowledge uh, sharing good practice uh, speeding up uh, the, 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 the working together of the, par the parties at the local level Okay, good. Um, and in terms of when you're, let's say, the retail agenda, how important do you think that is for reinvigorating urban spaces? I think very important because we have to have to handle about 20% of shrinkage in the retail square meters for shops. So the buildings and the, the, the streets are really transforming into... Uh, we need to transform them. We need to to focus in the city centers and the shopping areas that are uh, really um, uh, sound and really uh, healthy uh, and try to um, emphasize that the buildings that are coming free or the, the floor space that is coming free is used again for other purposes. So we need the government also to uh, make it possible to double uh, uh, give the, the situation the, the double function, all these buildings, so that they can, in a more organic way, change their uh, the function of the, of the building from a shop into homes, into other uh, activities, uh, health uh, institutions, uh, and so on. So we have to be uh, patient, because these changes won't get very fast, but we also need to try to uh, speed it up a little, so, uh, be because uh, when it takes about 15 years, then the, the security and the safety and the healthy environment of these areas is at stake. So we need to try to speed up the changes a little bit. Okay, good. Um, and Frank, maybe thank you for joining us. Maybe Hi, give us a quick overview of IVBN. I'm interested to know um, where you are within that, within that, within the sort of city's investment working with cities um, and working with the regional government and the, and the national government? Well, our members are uh, specialized in, in the larger cities in the Netherlands. So anywhere we invest in, um, in housing, in uh, retail and in the offices. So uh, we are quite aware of uh, the importance of local governments. Of course, IVBN as an organization directs more attention towards the the, 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 the government of, of the Netherlands and the, the provinces. And, and, and how important for you is, um, in terms of the government, is, is creating a, a, a stable environment for both your own members, national investors, as well as international investors, creating that environment which allows cities then to thrive, I suppose, and encourage more investment? That, that differs quite a lot in, in, in what uh, terms of investment you're talking. For example, housing is uh, at the moment is very hot. And the Minister of uh, Interior Affairs in the Netherlands 
is uh, very much aware of the importance of, uh, of investors from abroad or in the Netherlands. And that market is booming. So we don't need any more any support from the local or uh, the official government of the Netherlands. That's quite different from retail, for example. Uh, I think that Marijke has already I, explained... I don't agree with you. Okay. Let me, may, may, may that's what, that's what we like, like a bit of disagreement. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she, she's not used to... Uh, Hi, Bas. Hi, thank you for joining I'm us. sorry, I was not aware of the fact that you already started. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> He's a bit okay. improvising. Uh, hello, uh, we, hello. It's, it's, gor it's guerrilla <laughs> tactics here, Bas. You know, you've got to... Okay, sorry <laughs> for that. <laughs> good. There, you, were in, you were in the middle of a disagreement, which is always oh, good. okay, that's interesting, <laughs> yeah. For the well, purpose of I, I the discussion, but Frank Wright tried to finish his uh, statement I, I was first. just saying that uh, on respect with the retail, uh, things are uh, different. We are working together with local governments, of course. You need local governments because they know what, uh, what the situation is and what they want to change. So we are um, uh, in the middle of, of discussions of where to diminish the, 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 the square meters of retail, for example. That's a very important task, but we, we need less. For example, for offices, it's quite, quite different. Uh, bus is uh, predominantly with offices occupied, of course. Uh, the Dutch institutional investors are a little bit retreating from the Dutch office market because it's, it's huge, a lot of vacancies, etc. And we are only investing in those places, in the larger cities and near to stations, multifunctional locations. So over there, we, we meet the government and we try to, uh, to, to give our best to do the, uh, the investment that we need over there. Okay, good. Um, and, and Frank obviously mentioned the, the offices side of that, Baz. Um, what are you seeing in terms of your, I guess, your relationship with both the cities um, and government? Are you getting what you need from, uh, from the cities and also here from uh, Marijke? Uh, yes, in general, in general yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we always want more, of course. Um, no, this is about placemaking, and um, if it comes to placemaking, we have some very good examples where we manage to cooperate with municipalities um, to create uh, a new atmosphere, to create new facilities, services in, uh, in an area. Uh, one of the examples is uh, in Amsterdam. We acquired uh, two former Citroën garages over there, which we now rebranded to uh, the Olympic Amsterdam. And um, yeah, we were closely together with the municipality to try to, well, as a part of the rebranding, to introduce restaurants, for instance, or also uh, different uh, cultural initiatives there. So uh, that, that was, of course, needs uh, cooperation in terms of uh, zoning plans or temporary lettings and, of course, safety or uh, the, the maintenance of or the management of, uh, of the public uh, areas. So, yeah, there are good examples. I mean, and that's interesting. And uh, Marika, how, how important do you think that, that placemaking side is, both as part of the retail agenda, but also as a broader one in terms of um, the government wanting to encourage and advance investment into, into its major assets, which are its cities? Uh, because of the zoning issue, it's very important. And that's the, the point that I mentioned that I did disagree because you said for housing, it isn't necessary that you need a government. But still, because of the zonation, is it's important to have the, the government in, in, involved, especially in these situations where the transformation is is, has to be made from offices to other activities or from uh, shops to other activities. And that especially is, needs the cooperation with uh, the gov local government. And in Amsterdam, there is a lot of new markets. It's developing. There are not a lot of tourists. There is uh, a lot of possibilities. But in other cities, more far away from the Randstad, it's more difficult. And especially in these situations, um, you need uh, to um, facilitate, you need to engage, um, have the engagement also from the government side that it's uh, interesting to uh, make these changes and to reinvest, not as much as in Amsterdam, that won't work. But especially in these more uh, outskirts <laughs> cities, it's important that this, uh, this support of local government is there. Okay, good. We, we, I don't think we disagree. Um, for, it's my provocation. For, on, on, on housing, for example, uh, when we transform uh, office uh, building or, or whatever is, is empty, uh, we get support from the local government, yes. which we seek. So I don't think it is quite, quite a problem. The problem on the housing market is more on the national level, 
uh, with, with, with levees which are very high. Uh, uh, we, we need a, a lack of locations, but there's no... In, in making yeah. places and transforming things, we don't disagree with I the agree, local but, government. But especially these locations, it's interesting because yesterday and the day before I was in a discussion also with the Minister of Internal Affairs and he mentioned the task that a lot of houses have to be made for the middle groups in the rental sector between 700 and 900 uh, uh, euros. There's really a task. And in uh, Amsterdam it needs also 10,000 uh, new homes. And perhaps in, we, in we Amsterdam there isn't a space in the city center, I know. But in a lot of other cities there is also space in the city centers or there is the transformation task. And then it's really interesting to see how large uh, investment parties want to uh, invest in this transformation and this issue of the sustainability use of the old complexes in, and change them into new yeah. Uh, activities and then what is then the business model? That's interesting for from the Citroën uh, yeah. uh, example yeah. uh, because it is possible, but you need a lot of more fantasy than in, uh, building in a greenfield. Yes, uh, that's sure. Yeah, but that's also if you transform offices, for instance, to residential. What is necessary that it also uh, feels like a more residential area and uh, place making with restaurants or cultural initiatives or. Um, uh, retail, for instance, well, very much contributes to a more lively uh, area, which is good for residential. So sometimes you have a, is it, is, it, is it marked as a real office location? And to transform that, these uh, new functions in an area are very important in the, in the, in the whole atmosphere there. Uh, and, uh, I mean, just, just coming back to you, you, Frank, we're, I mean, we're talking, we've been talking about transformation, particularly in, in Rotterdam and The Hague. Um, how active is that as an opportunity for your areas, uh, for, for your members? Um, it, where, does, where does the regulation sit? I mean, I know last year, for example, one of the issues that we had was transformation was difficult because of both blocks at local and national government. Where is that at the moment? How possible is that, that transformation story as an opportunity for... for for your members? In Amsterdam, uh, anything goes at the moment, I think. Uh, we see that parties, not only my members, but also other investors are trying to get a hold of empty, uh, vacant buildings to transform them. So it's quite a way, uh, quite a difference from, from several years ago. Uh, in Rotterdam, maybe it's, it's more difficult. In The Hague, in Utrecht, it's, it's okay. It's, it depends very much on the location. Uh, what we experience is that the local governments are very eager to transform and uh, we can find them and we can also talk about uh, the program which they want to be installed and if we can, uh, if we can uh, realize that. I don't see any large problems concerning transformation except for the uh, financial side. Uh, that's of course always a problem. And if the former owner, maybe that's our member themselves or maybe other owners, they, they have to, uh, to, uh, to accept that their building is much less worth than they thought it was. And after that, well, anything goes on transformation, I think. Okay, good. Um, and from, from the government's point of view, obviously you've got a, you, we've, we've already heard that there's longer term strategies that are needed. That came through very clearly from Chris's presentation, but also the other comments so far on the panels. Um, how long term is the strategy of the the government um, towards these things? Governments obviously change um, over a period of time. I mean, so are these strategies something that transcend different parties? Um, are there are there strategies that that are working through, or is it you may have a decision now that may change the next time there's an election? Oh, we uh, it won't, we won't be able to have the results we want in a in about two years. So we have to be patient. and have to be uh, see it in a long run. This transformation issues, but also but we are also impatient. Uh, in the retail agenda, we say we have to have results in 2017. But these results you will see also on the in the in the way of the the process of working together. That that are also important results, and we see them now already. There is a lot of uh, cooperation between private and public parties in uh, the sector now, 
And when we started, I think you can agree, two years ago, it was more uh, antagonistic, it was more quarreling, and now we are really uh, are having the together. same vision in the way it has to change. So uh, I really am optimistic about uh, the results because we all know that we have to go into the direction of more uh, uh, lively um, shopping areas, good management of shopping malls, uh, really transformation of the city centers and make them more concrete and uh, shrink the, the, the floor uh, square meters that are available. Um, uh, the, the try to engage new uh, groups, tourists and, and young consumers and set, uh, make, make use of social um, uh, services and also from the social media. And the on and offline discussion is also diminished to, uh, okay, it's some new channel and you have to be aware of your own profiling of your shop. So when you hear all the, the, the speakers in the, in the several um, um, situations I was in today and, and yesterday, we all have, in a way, the same message. That's really important. I think uh, uh, this country is really aware of a problem, but is also aware of the, 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 the way in which we will be able to change the situation. And how important do you think that is in terms of, um, let's say, international investors' view um, that you're doing this retail transformation? Um, is that about creating jobs and um, renewing city areas? Um, and, and how much of that is with an eye on what Chris is talking about, which is then creating a successful city in the view of, of outside, you know, uh, countries, uh, uh, people from outside of the area? Yeah. I work together with other European cities, uh, also European cities with universities, and we are all aware of the task Europe has to be able to... Um, to earn money also in future. And so we have to be aware of an environment that is stimulating young people to engage entrepreneurship and to be uh, taking, to take their own responsibility for their own income or be a professional in a large company that is really uh, uh, important to have too or be a, a good civil servant in uh, the domain of health or in uh, the public domain. So. I think the good education of young people is important. Uh, university cities are important in that in that way, but also the smaller cities in Holland are taking their um, positions in this uh, in these changes. And uh, for Holland, it's really important to have these larger cities that are taking uh, the thing going, and to have uh, in that way an attractive um, economic climate for entrepreneurs. And this counts in all Europe. And we are, uh, it's not going in an easy way because when we don't do it, it, won't, it will go to other areas of the world. So we have to be aware of the really important task. It's not only about retail, it's about the changing in the economy. It's about the impact of globalization and the responsibility we have to take with our children to, uh, to um, make the, the right decisions now for the future. Okay, good. Um, and Paz, we've talked about placemaking, the importance of that in terms of both the office destination, because you need to have something around that area. Um, uh, how important for you is it that, um, let's say we've talked about the Holland Metropole, how important is it for you that Amsterdam, um, Rotterdam, The Hague, um, uh, you know, they, they all take on a larger emphasis, a, uh, you know, they move up the ladder in terms of investment um, and that they become really truly on a world-class city on a world stage how important is that for you in terms of attracting office clients and and on that kind of granular level you mean uh, present uh, the Netherlands as a metropole yeah. area yeah yeah that is of course very important in many ways um, for offices uh, it is one way to uh, attract international companies to the region so that's very obvious so uh, there's more market for uh, office space, but it's also for international investors. So our Dutch sector funds, uh, which are open for institutional investors, uh, are looking yeah, for new clients. And uh, as long as we are able to present themselves as a whole, so with these four larger cities, we may have uh, much more impact on them uh, compared to the fact that each city is presenting itself. And another aspect is that uh, we have seen a lot of competition between these uh, municipalities in the past. Uh, 
uh, especially uh, with regard to office space. Uh, if a company is searching, there was a well, quite some competition going on. Uh, so also in that way, it is very important that, uh, that there's much more uh, cooperation between the municipalities. Uh, okay, good. Can I yep. add something about you, that Holland City? You can. If, yes. I, if I'm allowed, I would say that uh, Holland City is not a good term because it's the Randstad within uh, the, the situation of the North rhine westfalen and the uh, Brussels-Antwerp uh, region. So it's a bigger picture. It's not only Holland City, it's tri-state city. Uh, on that scale, we can uh, get a, 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 a real mega city to compare that with other regions. And if we stick to Holland City, we, we miss a lot of Germany and the power of, of Brussels and Antwerp. So I think that the concept for the better of Netherlands is to be in the tri-state city. So maybe that's something to think about. I agree on that because uh, in uh, the Ruhrgebied, the special uh, uh, area it, in cooperation with Dutch uh, activities, uh, it's very important to have the, our technology university working together with this type of economic clusters. And uh, on the scale of uh, the Randstad, there is too little activity to, to have the same impact. So we have to be aware of the, the dependency of uh, large clusters in the, the area of around uh, the Netherlands and in, in also in the UK uh, to be uh, involved in on a world scale. We have to think large. We have to think larger. And that's uh, yesterday there was a, at the Provada there was also a presentation of Tri-State City. And I like the concept very much, and I think it's better to, pr to, to promote Holland in that way. And um, if you British are staying in uh, the UE, <laughs> I would also try to include London. So please, Otherwise stay, you in. <laughs> stay in, stay <laughs> in. That's more than, a, than an institutional reality. 